Last time we finished by uh, considering Newton's great contributions to our understanding of the universe. He uh, established the laws of motion of bodies like planets, moons, uh, people, and so on. These laws uh, apply to so-called macroscopic objects, uh, but do not apply, as people discovered later on, to uh, atomic and subatomic particles for, to describe uh, the nature on that uh, small scale we need a different type of mechanics, so-called quantum mechanics, and I'll tell you a little bit uh, about the elements of it as we need it later on. So he discovered the laws of motion and the law of gravity and was actually able to combine the two and derive the three Kepler's laws of planetary motion. So that's great triumph of human mind that you are actually able to um, uh, find out the most basic principles that govern behavior of things around you and show how uh, uh, the motions of, say, uh, uh, heavenly bodies uh, follows from that. Uh, let me just, we'll move quickly to the new chapter. We'll start talking about uh, light and telescope, but let me just point out one thing that I want you to realize, that uh, Newton's law of gravity, uh, it states that if you have two bodies, say the Earth and the Moon, they exert on each other the force of gravitational attraction. Uh, the Moon is pulling on Earth, and the Earth is pulling on the Moon with the force of equal magnitude. These two arrows have the same length, but opposite direction. So these are the mutual forces of gravitational attraction. And uh, specifically, if the distance between them is uh, d, say, then the magnitude of this force is proportional. This is gravitational constant, which is a universal constant in uh, uh, nature. Um, and uh, the measurement of that constant basically amounted to uh, being able to weigh, uh, 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 say, planets uh, based on the orbital data uh, of their satellites, if they have any, or uh, weighing the sun based on orbital data of planetary motions. Uh, and then the product of the masses of the two objects, and it's in inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So it's an example, as I mentioned before, of an inverse square law. Basically, that the force of gravity is proportional. The fact often that something is proportional to is denoted with this horizontal incomplete uh, symbol eight. 1 over the distance squared. So that means that if I double the distance between two same bodies, if somehow I am able to pull them apart at a distance that is twice this distance, then because the force of gravity varies with distance as 1 over distance squared, when I double the distance, I have to square it that means that the force of gravity is going to decrease by a factor of four, right? So as you increase the distance, the force of gravity between two given objects is declining, but not in an arbitrary way, in a very precise way uh, as one over the distance squared, right? If I would triple the distance, then I would have three squared, so the force of gravity would decrease by a factor of nine. On the other hand, if I halve the distance between the two bodies, I'm reducing the distance, therefore I'm dividing with a smaller number squared, and the force increases. So as you decrease the distance, the force grows. As you increase the distance, the force decays, but not in an arbitrary way. It, it changes with distance as one over distance squared. So for instance, you will have on your test 
uh, some examples where you need to actually calculate these things. And the best, I mean, it's easy to do this in one's head, but if you are not very mathematical or uh, haven't done these things uh, uh, recently, I suggest that you uh, use the following uh, method. Uh, for instance, it is uh, simplest just to state that the force between two given objects changes with distances one over distance squared, right? So if I uh, have, say, um, uh, uh, a distance of one, then the force of gravity would be one over one squared, that is one, in some units. I can always adjust the unit so that I end up with this relation. Now, if I double the distance, right, then the force is one over two squared, which is a quarter, right? So in that case, the force of gravity is one over two squared, that is one over four, right? So it's reduced by a factor of four. And so on. If I triple the distance, then I will have the force of gravity one over three squared, which is uh, one over nine. So it would be reduced by a factor of um, nine. On the other hand, if I halve the distance, right, then the force of gravity is one over one half squared. That is like one over one quarter. And how many quarters do I have in a whole? Four. four. Okay, so the force is increased by a factor of four. Uh, 